Hello, this is Catherine, as I know I need to stop talking. It's sunny! Hello, lovelies! It's a sunny day! I mean, fucking hell! I thought, genuinely, the sun had, like, gone into retirement or had been killed off by Covid. I'm not a big one for the heat, but is it just me, or has it pissed it down for fucking months? Time Hop, such a dick at the minute, Time Hop keeps showing me, like, images from, from last year, which I appreciate is the whole point of Time Hop, that it's supposed to show you images from last year. So that in itself is not Time Hop being a dick. But literally every photo is like, oh look, we're in the garden, oh we're in the pool, oh I'm wearing short sleeves, oh I'm not wearing 30 layers and thermal underwear. I mean, fuck off Time Hop, fuck's sake. But yeah, it's been absolutely ridiculous. But this morning, God, the novelty, I got up and I drove to a football match and watched Beth play football. She was like, I'm too hot. I was like, shut up, shut up. I can actually feel my own vagina for the first time this football season at a game. It's a treat. It's an absolute treat. Now obviously I am one of those people who I'm not good with extremes of weather. I don't like being too cold. I'm also not very good being too hot. So I give it by this time next week, I'll be pissed off by the heat. I can almost imagine it. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a, a, sli a slightly whiter shade of pale. That song is basically me. And I have not put any sun cream on myself today, which is a really bad idea. Sun protection is really important, kids. Wear sunscreen, as Baz Luhrmann said, wear sunscreen. And I do, but I'm just looking down at my, my forearms and they are a nice, delightful lobster pink. So yeah, I need to, need to try and sort that out. But yeah, seeing the sun, God, doesn't it just make everything feel a bit better when it's not grey and pissing down and like it's still the middle of January. It's a, it's a joy. It's so nice to be outside and not freezing your tits off. So I hope you're doing, doing lovely things. It's been, it's been a funny week in so much as I have taken a week away from social media this week. I didn't really plan to take a week away from social media. Partly I had nothing interesting to say and I've definitely learned over the years that there are times if you've got nothing interesting to say, say nothing at all. And also I do think it's good to step away from social media for time to time. I regularly go to, I mean, Instagram's the worst, right? I think Instagram, everything looks so pretty and you're like, fuck, why is my life not pretty and technicolor and instead it's shit and pissing it down with rain? And of course, everybody's life is like that. They've just put some nice filters over the top. But I definitely think all of us place too much pressure on ourselves to just live up to just like completely non-achievable expectations. Like it's, it's highlights, it's edited highlights. And I know that, I, I should definitely know that with the amount of time I've spent on social media over the years. But every now and then I find myself going, oh, but I, I'm not as good as this person. I haven't done as well as this person. I'm like, fuck's sake, it's not a competition. It really isn't a competition. And I needed to remind myself of that. So I took a took a step away for a week, which was which was nice. And it's been it's been a really busy week at work. So actually having a little bit of time just to, to do the stuff I needed to do there. And yeah, it's been weird not writing for a week. And I've missed you all lots. I do miss you all lots when I when I don't write and I do worry about you all. Um, but it's been good for me to have a little bit of space. It's 12 years since I started the blog. I worked out that is my maths right? Oh God. I always do this thing. I'm convinced that I'm this brilliant, brilliant mathematician because I have a, a star in GCSE maths and I have an A-level in maths as well. So I convince myself that I'm a brilliant mathematician and then Mr. I know I need to stop talking asks me to calculate a simple percentage and I'm like, um, five, 50, 12, 10, 11, I don't know. So I literally don't want to know where I was going. Oh, 12 years, 12 years since I started the blog. So yeah, 2009, that is 12 years, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I remember when I started, and of course, when you start any blog, unless you have some weird twist of faith, nobody reads it. Absolutely nobody reads your blog. I mean, you probably do a lot. I remember getting really excited. I used to have Blogger. Oh, back in the days when you used to use Blogger. And you used to have to kind of do all the page set up yourself. And I found a little counter thing that would tell you how many people had, had read, your, read your blog. I got really excited one day when I went on and I was like, oh, it looks like an extra person. And then I realised I'd logged in from a different device and the extra person was me. It was me reading it, it twice. Oh, that's a, that's a sad and tragic confession. But I think it's good to talk about these things because I'm, I'm sure there are people who read, well I know I have people contact me now and sort of say, oh my god your blog's amazing, I'd love to have a blog like that, how did it get so big? And I felt exactly the same when I was when I was starting out and I think it is easy sometimes to actually forget the journey that you've been on and, and how far you've come, not just with, with, with blogging, with anything, like it's like, I don't know, running, I mean obviously you all know my views on running, fuck that shit, but for those of you who like running, which I appreciate is a is a fairly large percentage of people out there, you know, you, you might suddenly have a terrible run and be like, oh god, I was wanting for, hoping for a PB and I, and I didn't and I was really slow and my leg hurt, and you're like, yeah, but five months ago you could barely walk from the sofa to the fridge and now look at you 5k you're amazing I do think it's it's human nature to, to perhaps 
piss on our own chips rather too frequently. That's such a weird phrase, isn't it? Sorry, total aside, piss on, piss on the chips. Where does that come from? I, it's one of those things I don't think I want to Google because probably at some point someone will have actually pissed on someone else's chips. Yeah, there's a mental image, isn't there? But yeah, I think it was I think it was good to to take take that time away. And like I say, just just reflect on sometimes for all of us how far we've all come. I, I still remember when I moved the blog over to Facebook back in 2016, I think, pre-pandemic, when you could go and lick the face of whoever you wanted. Ha! <laughs> Those days are gone. I didn't actually lick people's faces, just in case you're you're worried I was creating some massive social faux pas there. And I did a post at the time which was I think it was to do about it was about having a day off that's day off in inverted commas when, you, when you're a parent and actually a day off is just an excuse to get done all the chores that you haven't had a chance to do when your kids are around and I remember it did like it did well and I remember I remember it got to 50 likes and I was like oh my god this is so exciting I've got 50 likes I think I had a few hundred page followers at the time and then my first ever post where it got to triple figure likes 100 likes and I was so so excited so so yeah it's uh, it's good to reflect I guess and we've all come a long way but I've I've definitely learned over the years if I have nothing interesting to say I should probably say nothing at all and this week I would just have been very boring so but I have missed you I have missed you all of you and I think um yeah if you take anything from that is pissing on chips I mean what is that about I'm gonna need to go and look that up now why why do we say they pissed on my chips and who was that person who pissed on someone's chips because Jesus that is a low blow right I mean to piss on anybody's possessions is is bad form but to piss on yeah to piss on someone's chips oh that's really low. That's really, really, really a very, very, very low thing to do. Anyway, where are we? We're digressing. There's, uh, there's loads of shit going on in my life at the minute, but it's all shit that I can't, uh, not necessarily bad shit at all. There's all stuff that I can't talk about. So it's kind of a slightly weird week where I'm like, what have I done? I've done lots of stuff. I can't tell you anything about it. Now I sound like a dick. It's nothing that interesting. There's not like some big secret announcement, but yeah, lots, lots going on. But let's, we can't talk about that stuff. So let's talk about the stuff that we can. I tell you what, it's 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 nice to be back doing this podcast where I don't have to be polite and wait for anybody else to speak. So I did a another podcast. I know, right? Another podcast. I, I betrayed my own podcast. But Mr. I Know I Need to Stop Talking, who obviously came and guested on this podcast, he now runs his own podcast. I've said the word podcast so many times there in quick succession. He runs a podcast through the satirical news site that he writes for, which I've mentioned before on the blog called News Biscuit. If you like satirical stuff, it's really good. It's Anybody can go and write stuff on there and get it published on the site. It's a great way for new writers to start out. So I would very much encourage anybody to go and have a look. Newsbiscuit.com. I think that's their URL. Obviously, you can tell this isn't like a proper advert or anything because I've probably just given you like some URL to some porn site where probably there's people pissing on people's chips. So I'm really sorry if newsbiscuit.com leads you to chip pissing. Um, but if you find out the origin of it, do come back and, and let me know. Anyway, so they've started up a News Biscuit, Biscuit podcast and in always the most flattering way to be asked to do anything, Mr. I Know I Need to Stop Talking said, someone's dropped out, so could you do it? Yay! And I said, yes, of course I will. And, and I was a bit blasé. I was like, oh, I've done loads of these podcasts it'll be easy but then I realized it's much more complicated when you have to actually allow other people to to speak and also obviously satirical stuff is is clearly I'm not very good at that kind of thing I'm much better when I'm talking about front bottoms and and pissing on chips so it was you know that that was a strain I also did the the classic thing because clearly on here one of the things I love is that I can scream fuck whenever I want to I mean not like continuously that would that would be weird but but swearing is not an issue but I hadn't checked with Mr I know I need to stop talking whether one was allowed to to swear or not so I was in the middle of, of ranting about god knows what and I just suddenly dropped the f-bomb fuck and then I was like oh my god I'm not supposed to and then I did that class thing oh my god I'm not supposed to fucking swear so he had to bleep me out twice so so that was a that was a good good achievement but if you want to listen it's the news biscuit po podcast like this one it's free to download from your platform of choice or on YouTube and there are lots of people on it who are much fun funnier than me so that alone should be a good indictment to to go and and listen to it so you might wonder what I've done on this lovely sunny hot beautiful afternoon yeah I've cleaned I've cleaned the house because I thought well let's let's get it let's get it out of the way let's get it get it over and done with and actually it's not too bad these days because the kids are that much older so I mean obviously you have to then assume that there's this continuous backdrop of whinging and moaning and complaining and whining and indeed there was but they are definitely more useful on the on the cleaning front than they were when they were small I was reminiscing in in our old house we had lovely slate floor tiles and Jamie I think I was cleaning the kitchen floor I used to 
I used to have this thing, and I just don't know what this version, what's happened to this version of me. I used to be like the person who'd like get up early in the morning so I could do the cleaning before I went to work. I genuinely, I look back at that period of my time and I think, I wonder if I needed some help because the the, the prospect of managing to do anything more challenging than apply winged eyeliner in the morning would, would frankly be beyond me. But I remember cleaning the kitchen floor, which was ironic because then Jamie, who must have been, I don't know, two, three at the time, said, I, I helping mummy. And I said, oh, good, and turned around and to watch him literally lift this giant bottle of olive oil out of the cupboard and just drop it on the ground and we both looked at it and he said oh it's spreading he said yes yes Tally, yes it is have you ever tried cleaning up olive oil off a off a slate kitchen floor i don't 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 do it it is a deeply deeply unjoyous because the more you it's one of those things where the more you try and clear it up the more the more it just it reminded me of that scene from you know fantasia when all the with mickey mouse and all the broomsticks like keep turning into more broomsticks i felt like there was just more and more olive oil materializing in my fucking kitchen i tell you what you could skid one end of that kitchen to the other for weeks after the olive oil olive oil incident as we like to to refer to it i mean that that at least was i mean i suppose it did get a nice nice shiny shiny finish beth used to love cleaning when she was little she had a real thing for for cleaning and also other people's shoes she's obsessed i've got loads of pictures of her with we're around people's houses and we're having a conversation and beth age like one or two or something is just like standing there like completely ignoring all conversation and basically just trying to pull their shoes off their feet which is is nice and sociable but she once she used to love cleaning, and so I used to be doing the cleaning, and I'd give her like a little J cloth to to pretend to be doing some cleaning with, and say, oh, you know, run some water out the tap, and you can pretend to do some cleaning, and obviously I'll come and clean it up afterwards because that's how it works. And then I think I'd gone into one of the bedrooms to Hoover, and then I came back, <laughs> came back out. Oh God! And I remember walking out into the hallway, and she was in the bathroom, and she said, "I'm helping, Mummy," and I said, "Yeah, good, great." And then I looked at what she was doing, and she was helping by taking the water out of the toilet and rubbing it all over the floor and herself and yeah that was delightful and, and god kids are kids are grim aren't they kids are so grim and useless useless at at cleaning but they are they are a little bit better now they are they are a bit better now, there was also a day when oh god there was also a day i can't remember i told the story before we had a three-story house and i was tidying up something on the top floor and mr i know i need to stop talking was on the ground floor and suddenly the kids jamie must have been about i don't know four maybe four or five beth was two and suddenly we heard the, the immortal cry from, from the middle floor, Mummy, Daddy, come quickly, I don't want my sister to die! And as you can imagine, I've never taken a set of fucking steps so quickly in my life. Both Mr. I Know I Need to Stop Talking and I arrived on the middle floor like, oh my God, what's happened? Jamie is hysterical because, oh, Beth, bless her. You know, those little battery powered fans, the ones with the really soft blades, so can't actually do any, any damage. Yeah, she she turned it on, held it too close to her, her hair and a small amount of her hair and got caught into it. Jamie had lost his shit completely. And this, I think, is the difference between siblings because, you know, while not wishing to cast aspersions on myself and my sister Helen when she, when she was younger, I'm pretty certain that if either one of us had, had got a fan caught in caught in our hair i i'm not convinced that either of us would have been calling for help instead I, I feel that we might have been like filming it to send it to, to you've been framed instead so so yeah um tidying not their not their strength they, they've both been they've both been sent to, to tidy their rooms i mean it's like the most pointless activity of all time right sending your kids to tidy their rooms it's that classic thing i've, I've never once sent my kids to tidy their rooms and had that objective achieved, which makes me wonder why I bother. I think there's two schools of thought when you when you send send kids to tidy their room. And my my two fall on both sides of the spectrum. So Beth is definitely of a I'll get sent to my room to tidy it. And oh my goodness, there's all these other interesting things that I haven't played for in like for forever. So I'm going to take all of those out as well, layer them on top of all the shit that I've got out already, and then I'm going to come in and be like, Beth, are you tidying a room? And she'll be like, Oh. I was tidying, but but then I found all these things, and it'll end up messier than it started. Or well, then you got Jamie. Jamie, Jamie, I think he's like he's like in the fifth hour of tidying his room today. Because basically, you go, Jamie, go and tidy tidy your room. And he's like, yeah, 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 I will do. And then he'll he'll just get in there, and he'll just sit, and he'll just stare at something. I don't know, like a, a book or or the wall or some coloured bits of string blowing in the wind. And you go, and you're like, are you tidying? He's like, yeah, yeah. Well, you're not, are you? Yeah, yeah, and no, I'm tidying. Well, well, where, where is the evidence this tidying? Well, I'm doing it. I'm doing. Don't hassle me, mum. Don't hassle me, mum. Pretty much guarantee I'll give it another couple of hours. Got there. You t are you tidying? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. Are you? Well, no, not really. I'm sitting, staring, staring into space. I hope at least he might shift 
some of the glassware. I'm getting to that point where, you know, you go and open the, the kitchen cupboard to make dinner and you're like, where the fuck are all the plates? In fact, any kind of vestibule whatsoever. They're in Jamie's room. He's got enough glassware in there to set up his own fucking brand of John Lewis. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, I, I live in hope that one of them might one day, when sent to tidy their room, actually fucking tidy it. I fear I may be waiting a long time. I had to pause briefly there because today Ocado won the game of Russian roulette. As regular listeners will know, every every week, and I don't know why, I don't know why I don't change one of these two things, but I'm very stubborn. Every week, Ocado tends to arrive for our weekly shopping delivery at round about the same time I record this podcast. Every week, it's a little bit of a, of a Mexican standoff. As it, that's what I meant. I didn't mean Russian roulette at all. Clearly, nobody's pointing any guns in this scenario. A Mexican standoff as to who will arrive. Will Ocado arrive before the end of the podcast? But Ocado did arrive. I mean, I, I, I love Ocado. This is not an advert, but I love Ocado. We've, we've shopped with them for a very, very, very long time. Love their delivery drivers. Brilliant guys today who, I mean, obviously, it's like the hottest day of the year so far. So naturally, Jamie is swanning around the house in a toweling dressing gown. And I literally howled. We opened the door, said hello to the Cardi driver. We exchanged comments on the weather for, of course, we are British. It's what we do. And then Jamie rocks up at the, at the door to come and help. And wearing the skankiest, smelly, black toweling dressing gown with like little bits of thread hanging off it. And... God love the Ocado driver who turned to Jamie and went, goodness me, it's a bit hot to be wearing a house coat, isn't it? I literally love that he used the phrase house coat. It could only have been better if he'd, if he'd referenced smoking jackets. And then they had a, a little discussion about it's a man thing, apparently, to, to wear dressing gowns at, at all times. I don't get it. Jamie wears a dressing gown all, all the Well, to be fair, the Ocado driver was probably lucky Jamie was wearing a dressing gown because the, the alternative is Jamie wearing absolutely nothing at all. And that would be a very startling experience for, for all of us. So, yes, Ocado. Ocado won the battle today, but I will win the war. God love, God love Ocado. So I live in hope that the, the kids might tidy their room sometime of the next millennia. They won't. Meanwhile, I cleaned out the fridge. God, I hate cleaning out the fridge. I really hate it. It's one of my most hated household chores, along with putting fucking sheets on the fucking bed, particularly fucking fitted sheets. Fucking fitted sheets are the biggest fucking dick of household items ever. I defy you to think of a bigger dick of a household object than a fitted sheet. Impossible to fucking fold. Impossible to get on the fucking bed, because I don't know if it's just me. Whenever I wash them, it's like when you wash your jeans, and then you try and put your jeans on, and you momentarily feel like your inner organs might spill out your mouth. That is how I think my mattress feels when I try to put my fitted sheet back on it. So... Yeah, alongside making beds, which is the ultimate dick job, and I hate it, cleaning out the fridge. But I read a magazine article once upon a time, which was probably bollocks, but it did the job. It's it's scare tactic to me into being scared of into cleaning out my fridge. And it said that the inside of a fridge was dirtier than a toilet seat. Well, probably, particularly if Beth's been in there cleaning toilet seats with toilet water. And that may or may not be, be true, but I, I've taken it to heart, so I, I spent a good half an hour cleaning out cleaning out the fridge and of course as any parent knows it's not just a simple act of you know taking the shelves out giving them a wash and putting them back in you spend the entire fucking time taking out packets with like one item in it or empty who the fuck puts an empty packet back in the fridge that literally defies logic i challenged the kids on that once one of them had put in two empty punnets straight back in the fridge and I challenged them and said, WTF, what are you doing? Why are you putting them back in? Oh, I couldn't be bothered to put it in a bin. In the bin. And I explained, the bin is one step to the left. You still have to open one door to either put it back into the fridge or put it into the bin. Oh, yeah, it was just, it was just, just a bit much to think about. How, how can that be a bit much to think about? I do worry about the, the generation, the next generation, but I also appreciate that I was exactly the same at the time. Our fridge as a kid, I don't know if anybody else said, because fridges used to be a lot smaller, didn't they? So our fridge when I was a kid, and my mum was and still is an amazing, amazing cook, but our fridge, I could only describe it as it was like a constant game of Tetris. It was so round with food, and as I say, not a huge fridge, that literally to get something in, you'd have to move something across, take it down two rows, move it across, push something up, pull something from the back, and eventually if you got it all right and in the right order, the item that you wanted would come out. More often not, not the whole lot would, would, would fall on. I was going to say fall on you, it would fall on me. It would fall on me. My, my skills of getting things out of out of, out of fridges are, are not all that. To be fair, it obviously wasn't too long since I'd last cleaned out my fridge because I didn't find too many horrendous findings there other than the world's saddest looking Swede. I should have taken a photo because I genuinely think if there was a competition for world's saddest Swede, this Swede 
would have would have won it. I find Swedes a very difficult vegetable. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with them. So I do that thing that I'm I'm sure I hope I'm not the only person does, which is basically leave them till they're beyond the point of no return and take them out and go, oh, what a shame, it's gone off. Oh, well, never mind. They came They came in my veg box and I got one and, and I cooked it and it was all right. And I thought, good, I've done it. I felt like ticked off Swede on my adulthood, on my adulthood chart, dealt with Swede. I, I, I ticked that off and, th- and then they sent me another one. I was like, for fuck's sake, having a laugh. But I forgot to tell you on last week's podcast, breaking news, I did something with my celeriac. So again, if you're new to the podcast, I had a good fortnight when I bought a celeriac, so this this wasn't a veg box surprise, this was a deliberate, I chose to buy a celeriac because I thought it sounded like a really nice vegetable. As you can see, I probably, I, I think I'm trying to like personalise vegetables maybe a bit too much. I have very strong feelings about them, but I thought it just seems such like a, like a really nice, like a less, oh, celery is obviously very long and, and quite like hard. And I just thought a oh, celeriac, it sounds, sounds lovely. And then I got home and I realised I didn't know what the fuck to do with it. So... I googled and lots of the recipes sounded sounded very complicated. So so in the end, having having googled and, and sort of discussed on here maybe things I could do with the celeriac, I, I went simple. I, I went for celeriac celeriac chips. Straightforward. Peeled it, chopped it. Difficult to chop, but not as difficult as the butternut squash, which is perhaps the most difficult vegetable of all, little shit. And I chopped it into, into chip strip things and I parboiled it like the recipe told me I was supposed to do, and then I put it into the oven. And to be honest, I fucking wish I had pissed on those chips because they tasted like shit. Absolute shit. I don't know, maybe maybe it was user error. Maybe celeriac chips are, are usually delightful. So that was a another tick on the adult chart that I shall not be be looking to to repeat. It was a it was in the end a, a disappointing experience for I imagine both myself and and the, the celeriac. So it's obviously it's half term, it's bank holiday weekend, it's a sunny bank holiday weekend. I mean fucking hell, it's like a like a miracle. And and of course in England certainly we can we can actually do stuff now which doesn't involve just staying in our house and staring at four walls, which is terribly exciting. We are packing currently to spend some time away this week. We're, we're, we're going away, and, and I've described this to sort of a few people, friends and work colleagues, and they're like, oh, how lovely, a romantic weekend away. And then I sort of have to confess that I've clearly planned this very badly because we're going to stay in a really, really lovely hotel that we've stayed in several times, and, and I've booked as a suite um, because we've not been away for a long time, so I'm very excited about this. And it's like, oh my God, that sounds so romantic. And it's at that point I have to reveal, yeah, the reason we've booked a suite is so the kids can come in with us as well because I'm quite tight and it's cheaper for the kids to come in with us. So there's going to be four of us sharing a, a suite in a really nice hotel, which probably won't be really nice by the time we've we've finished with it. I mean, what what could possibly, possibly go go wrong? But the, the, the next task on my list for, for this evening, once I've gone and checked whether or not the kids have done anything to tidy their room, they won't have done, I can tell you that now, I then need to pack. I'm not known for being a good packer. I mean, I'm a, I'm a very enthusiastic packer, but I'm not the kind of person who, I don't like to make decisions really. And I, and I, you know, I never really plan out outfits in advance. I get up on the day and think, what would I like to wear? So consequently we're going away for the night, I'm probably thinking I'm going to need about at least, and and this is me cutting down, I think probably at least seven to ten different outfit choices dependent on activity, weather conditions, what other people might be wearing, what shoes I feel like wearing. I wore heels this week for the first time in just over a year. Let's just say that was a stressful experience. I had to go into the office this week, I haven't been in the office for for a very long time because I've been working from home, so I wore heels. Fuck me. I genuinely worried that I was going to going to fall and kill myself because such is my ineptitude in a four inch pair of heels. And I'm sure the sensible amongst you right now would be saying, Catherine, surely this is an opportunity. Retire your heels. There's loads of really lovely, cool, groovy flat shoes out there. Get some of those instead. And to all of you people, I say, yes, you are absolutely right. And I still know that I won't do it because I'm stubborn as fuck. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to to try and try and pack. Um, but yeah, not known for my my ability to pack right. I've got a photo somewhere on, on one of my social media feeds, which is me trying to pack for a week away when we'd gone away for a week in the summer. And it looked like I'd got roughly the entire contents of Primark in one big pile to attempt to get into a very small suitcase. Needless to say, that didn't quite work out. My favourite not packing light story comes from when I was having Jamie. And like lots of expectant parents I'd, I'd read book upon book upon article upon social media forum and like made list after list after list of everything I thought I was going to need to have this baby when it turns out all I was going to need to have the baby was a vagina if only someone had told me that anyway I 
packed all my stuff and you have this thing about packing a hob hospital bag so I packed it and I checked it and I made sure it was packed and I felt really good and like I was really really on top of this and, and ready to go and then eventually went to labour I won't rehash that it's on another podcast if you want to hear it suffice to say that labour takes a fucking long time it's just such a fucking fundamentally badly flawed design process how was anybody thinking that something that size is going to come out of something that size right I know and so I, I, I got all my stuff and, and again, I won't rehash this because it's in a, on another podcast, but let's just say when your husband doesn't drive, getting to the hospital in labour is, is interesting. At least it certainly was for the commuters on one particular train journey. But as I say, another story for another time. And I got to hospital with, with all my stuff. Now they said hospital bag. But I took the singular of bag as, as to be guidance. And so, so I turned up at hospital with not hospital bag, hospital bags. Z- Plural, plural bags, plural bags and a pillow. Because somebody had told me, take your own pillow from your bed. It'll be really nice in hospital. Probably was really nice in hospital. But to be honest, when you're off your fucking face and die of morphine, I would not have cared less. It could have been anybody's pillow. I wouldn't have minded. And mortifyingly, when I got into hospital with all, all the stuff and they said, right, we're, we're going to take you up to the labour ward. And they said, where's your, where's your bag? And I said, bags. And then they looked around me and I looked like I was about to go off on some package holiday to Tenerife for, for three weeks. They're like, oh, is this all yours? I was like, yeah. And Mr. I know I need to stop talking. He manfully attempted to, to carry it all, which he did. But eventually they, they sent him home because I was in hospital for quite a while and I wasn't, things were not progressing. So they said, right, we're just going to take you down onto a normal ward. Another, another midwife came in, is this your bag? Bags, bag. Gosh, they're all yours. Yes, they're all mine. And they ended up mortifying me having to get a, a trolley which porter pushed to carry all my luggage down to the ward that I was going to go to. So when you hear about the bed crisis in the NHS, I think it's people like me that that might be causing it. Of course, it goes without saying, I didn't use even one hundredth of the stuff I packed in my bag. Because like I say, all you really need to, to have a baby is a vagina. And that's what the baby book should tell you. I hope you all have a really lovely half term. I'll mostly be spending mine watching my children not tidy their rooms I suspect I I feel like I need to be strong and just not crack but I also feel like like me they're very stubborn so it'll be a a little little competition to see which of us which of us cracks first and then I maybe I'll clean my freezer gosh I know how to live right but I hope you have lovely weeks I hope you enjoy the sunshine I hope you are able to be with at least some of the people you love doing something that you love and having a generally lovely time look after yourselves take care and I will speak to you all soon lots of love bye bye